All right, President Biden spoke in Milwaukee today, continuing his Bidenomics tour. And this comes even as inflation on his watch has caused hardworking American families to spend an additional $700 a month just to maintain the standard of living that they had two years ago. Does the president's messaging match the experience of working families? Well, joining me now to discuss this is Congressman Ron Estes. He serves on the House Committee on Ways and Means, as well as the Budget Committee and the Committee on Education and Workforce. He represents the 4th Congressional District of Kansas. Congressman, great to see you again. Welcome to Washington Watch. Hi, Jody. It's great to see you again. Thanks for having me on. Well, it's always an honor. I miss you. It's great to have you here with us. All right, Alyssa, I want to jump into Biden, Bidenomics and get your opinion on that. But obviously, the big news of the day is the indictment against President Trump. Just real quickly, before we get into Bidenomics, uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it really is a politically motivated, driven indictment. I mean, you know, you know the people that are involved in Georgia more than I do. But Obviously, it's been two and a half years since the election. If they were trying to do something, uh, instead they waited till uh, President Trump had announced for a reelection campaign, and and uh, it's it shifted the focus away from the the fires, the cities burning up in in Maui, shifted the focus away from the second year anniversary of Afghanistan and the and the failures there and the pullout there. It's, it's just kind of indication of of how wrong the president has been on so many things. I mean, he talks about Bidenomics being something good, uh, but uh, just like he was wrong on inflation, he was wrong talking about uh, that he wasn't involved in Hunter Biden's business dealings, uh, that uh, he, he says that uh, Biden inflation is uh, helpful for Americans. And that's, that's not the story that we're seeing. As you said, individuals are paying $700 more per month. And literally what that means, if you if you look at the inflation uh, since President Biden came into office, it's the equivalent of taking two months paycheck out of everybody's pockets to buy the same goods and services, the same rent, same car payment, the same groceries. Uh, it, it's really an impact and it's a burden on people. Well, it really is. And that is the reality of what's going on. You know, I saw earlier today a, a report that credit card balances have topped one trillion dollars for the first time ever. I mean, that in yeah. itself says that Bidenomics is being more harmful. It's doing more harm than good, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. And one of the things they touted about that uh, in, in last month's report was that the GDP grew, but it grew because of more grocery purchases being put on credit card balances. So people are having to use their credit cards to actually buy groceries to, to feed themselves. And that, that just adds more and more burden. And, that, and that, that means that you have to pay that out over time. Uh, we're seeing stories here in Kansas where people don't have the money to buy the same back to school supplies uh, that they need. And of course, gas prices, we've seen them. Normally gas prices go up leading into summer. And then after July 4th, they start to taper off. But now they're starting to rise back again. We're seeing that uh, the the, the uh, credit card uh, pricing, as you said, is is uh, uh, a, a tremendous burden, and and it's it's an impact that takes money out of people's pockets, and and they just they don't have the money to actually pay for the things that they need. Yeah, and you know, even the gas prices, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, as you well know was utilized when probably it should not have been to try to get the prices of gasoline down. Well, now we've used up a significant portion of that reserve, enough to where I'm hearing it's going to take decades to refill it. And so kind of that uh, that spigot is being shut off and gas prices going right back up. But let's continue here. The, the uh, credit card uh, debt just from April to June, it went up $45 billion, as you're referencing. I mean, that, that's 4% just in that short period of time. And as we mentioned, going over a trillion dollars. And yet, and, and I want to, I, I couldn't help but just shake my head in wonder with the president today saying that Bidenomics is just another way of saying restoring the American dream. I mean, kind of, uh, it's, it's troubling news, reality of what's happening. Uh, what are your thoughts on him making that kind of a statement? Yeah. 
It, it really is. It's it's indicative that that he doesn't understand what's going on. And you know, like I said earlier, is it is he he was wrong when he talked about inflation wasn't going to be a problem uh, with all the government spending, and he started. He was wrong in saying it was going to be uh, an easy pull out of Afghanistan and that Taliban wouldn't take over. Uh, he's wrong in saying that he wasn't going to be involved in Hunter Biden's hadn't been involved in Hunter Biden's business dealings. And and now we're seeing the the consequences of of the pocketbook impacts that are affecting Americans, the the cost of inflation and actually real wages being down because of that impact on them. Yeah, and more troubling news, and you're you're hitting all over it. But I also saw that uh, people are using for hardship reasons using their four hundred one k accounts. Uh, this is just another sign. I want to play uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said something on CNN. I want to play this real quickly. Clip 11, please. Let's let's get that. I want to get your reaction to this. Over 70 percent of Americans um, say that they're very comfortable with their financial situation. So they seem to perceive the economy uh, as a whole as doing less well than they are personally. But most Americans feel good about their own economic situation. I'm not aware of most Americans feeling good about their financial situation. Uh, what kind of I'm not, I'm not seeing the poll that she's referring to. I, do you have any idea? I have no idea what polls she could be referring to. I mean, nothing I've seen ever says anything like that, that Americans are comfortable. The, the polls I see is a majority of, of people that are uncomfortable with their economic situation in terms of uh, the amount of money they have in their pocketbook and their concern for the growth in the economy, concern for their future well-being. And you know, you talked about, uh, you mentioned about 401ks. I mean, the statistics coming out now that there's more and more hardship withdrawals coming out of 401k accounts, which which means people can't afford to save for their retirement because they're having to spend that money today for the things that they need. And I, I just don't understand it. The whole administration seems to just miss the boat on so many things. And it, it's unfortunate because the American people end up suffering because of that. Yeah, and the president actually inherited a pretty good situation apart from COVID. Uh, the, the economy had been moving strongly forward and inflation was down and they have just gone the opposite direction. I, I want to shift gears because uh, Congressman Ron Estes, you have been such a leader on on issues like this ever since you came to Congress. But uh, you have joined some other colleagues of yours and have launched a bipartisan fiscal reform uh, effort. Uh, what are you hoping to accomplish? What is this and what do you hope to uh, come see come from it? Yeah, well, as we all know, I mean, it, the, the information's out there. Our national debt is large, it's looming, and it continues to grow. And it's because this uh, this continuing overspending of the revenue. And uh, there is no money tree in Washington, D.C. And so what we're seeing, and, there, and there's some Democrats and some Republicans that are out there actively taking a role of looking at what do we do going forward? Because this is not sustainable. This is not something that we should want to leave to our kids and grandkids. And and so we we understand that the country and economy continues to grow. And you know, there's a need to make some prudent investments, but it doesn't make sense to just spend willy-nilly more than what you have coming in. And and what we've seen uh, continuously is more and more programs that are not just continuing to grow, but continue to increase each year. So we we've, we've got to make some hard decisions on uh, let's not uh, let's not spend more money year over year. Uh, let's look at freezing. Maybe we should freeze our our spending for a couple of years, or maybe even one of the things that we're advocating for the fiscal 2024 budget is uh, let's spend at the fiscal 2022 level. You know that was only a year and a half ago that we were spending at the, the fiscal 22 level. It wasn't it wasn't bad times. It was actually pretty good. There was a lot of good things that were being done then. And and we'd save over $130 billion if we just spend at the same rate that we were spending at, uh, you know, less than a year and a half ago. So that, that's the focus that, that we need to have. And, and the group's trying to work on different ideas. Obviously, there's issues ranging from uh, discretionary spending, whether it's whether it's defense or whether it's uh, health and human services. 
Uh, there's also a, a lot of programs that are, you know, automatic spending programs that, you know, we've got to figure out ways to get past the political rhetoric around uh, Medicare and Social Security uh, because those Absolutely. are programs that we pay into. And uh, we, we we pay in, but we don't Congressman, pay in Congressman, we're going to wrap. We gotta, we're going to have to stop right there. Hard break coming up. Congressman Ron Estes from Kansas, thank you for joining us.